sounds really simple, but frankly, I told the students, I'm not even sure if this is possible. I never imagined that could all happen within one week. Janet Uckelman is a world-renowned artist, a sculptor who designs structures at the scale of cities. She works primarily with soft, draped, colorful fishing net, and they form these billowing, extremely light structures. And she really works on these sculptures, which are more than sculptures and more like environments, really. She's assembled this incredibly innovative team of mathematicians, of structural engineers, of computer scientists, who have contributed various ways of thinking about her process that she has then synthesized to create these incredible works. Part of the playfulness for me is, is playing with scale, creating soft structures that change and adapt. Like, it's a volumetric form, but without heavy solid materials. My goal of this workshop was for the students to experience designing in a completely different way. The Suddenly they are working with a tensile and soft material and working with tension. We got started with a really abstract brief. We asked them to build a cube with a four inch side length suspended in space from a larger frame. And the cube had to be a skew within the frame. Then we had them learn a computational tool that is meant to augment that process. It finds the closest possible composition of tensile elements to your goal while guaranteeing tensile equilibrium. This is a huge step forward to be able to iterate constantly and to allow the artist to be more involved in the design of the structures. It's fun to work with someone who understands the implications of a lot of structural thinking in an artwork, as well as the ways that working through a question within an artistic practice allows you to return to a more scientific approach with new insights and discoveries. So uh, I think we're going to start out by making something called an ice splice, right? So it's we, We're really lucky to have um, Nicole Wang, who is a structural engineer from Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, come and share with everyone her knowledge about how to do rope splicing, which is the, the technology used in Janet's full-scale structures. My background has been in textiles, and a lot of my work within school has been trying to figure out sort of how to integrate textiles into a larger architectural scale. So it's been exciting to be able to see sort of what my interests are in the real world and sort of how they're actually applied. And then we said, okay, so with these ropes, with the splicing connection detail, design a larger scale piece that fit inside the museum studio space that we were in. And today we all built it. There's a lot of self-organization and the students did the same process basically of taking the design, taking the measurements, cutting them, using the splicing technique to link everything together, and then just hoisting it up. What I found, especially here at MIT, is working with people beyond myself and working with experts from many other disciplines is one of the most rewarding things that I've been able to do so far in my career. I am very obviously not a design student here, um, so this has been a really good opportunity to sort of explore a different environment than what I'm used to. To be able to have these transferable skills and being able to say like, oh, this is how I understand this chemically, this is how I understand this visually, um, has been really interesting and a really good opportunity. You don't get stuck in the sort of analytical mindset. It embraces the chaotic mess that a creative process is, instead of the dogma of what a solution should look like. And what was exciting is what this group of people brought to the table. I'm very excited about the trajectory that we've started. And I'm not sure where it's gonna take us. I'm very excited to find out.